Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial. Today I'll be giving you a quick look into the Light Icon field software, just a basic introduction and general navigation to where everything is. Okay, so this is our Light Icon home screen. So it's application driven, so we can see our applications along the top here. So generally what the way I say to guys is we go into the application for the function we want to do. So in this sense, if we wanted to go in and do an as built, we go into the measure application, or if we want to do any layout tasks, we go into the either stakeout, layout points, layout lines, or layout objects applications. Okay. So what we have got is our data section down the bottom left hand corner, which is the section we would go to in terms of managing our information, creating the folder structure as in creating our projects, jobs, importing information, exporting, and creating ports, or even generating stakeout lists. Okay, then on the bottom right hand corner, we can see the settings icon. So I'll just start off here. So if I go into the system setting, some of the main things that we would look at doing here is you might want to take note of just what version is on. So I'm on the latest version, like icon 5.5. Okay, if you don't see one of the functions that I can see, it could just be that you need to get a new CCP, which is a customer care package, which entitles you to the latest version plus a year's worth of updates. So within the system folder, what we might have an interest in is your touchscreen mode. So if you're using the Leica Icon CC80s, we do work in Ireland, so I would recommend that you remain in touch wire. Therefore, your screen will not register a raindrop as a touch. We might want to look at our display settings. Okay. So I will be doing a video on how to do an angle check on your total station. And we will be coming and changing our instrument from standard to precise. Okay. So that's really all. You might want to change the language. Okay. You can also see that here. Or you also have online maps where you can actually log in and download a background map to where you're working. Okay. If I just jump back out to the home screen, within the units tab, this is where you can actually specify the units of your controller. So again, I have it set just to standard. I generally wouldn't change these myself. And um, the angles, I would always ensure our degrees, minutes, seconds are not gone. But again, that's a personal preference. The tolerances, you can see here, like icon standard comes with three, precise, medium, and tolerant. Okay, but you can see there, you can create user defined and actually specify and change the names of them if you so wish. Okay, so what we can see there is generally I leave it on medium. OK, but this might change for the task we want to do. What I will kind of emphasize is that a tolerance setting does not make your results more accurate. It is essentially just a benchmark location for where do you want it to flag if it's out of tolerance. OK, so you can see our setup tolerances, stakeout tolerances, et cetera, and GPS tolerances down the bottom there. OK, jumping back out again. So we also have our devices. We can see our list of profiles, which is active units in which this controller has been linked up previously too. So it'll actually remember the exact serial number of say the robotic or the GPS. So it actually creates a unique connection between the two. You're not limited to how many profiles you can create. However, multiple profiles can end up causing collisions or confusion for the controller if we overload with too many. Okay, so I would say one, two, three, four, five is fine. Anything above that you kind of might be uh, just confusing the situation and it might get complex for yourself. You can give them unique names if you so wish, but you can see there, like in all the aspects of icon, green plus is to add, red X is to remove. So if I just go to add and I define a model, I just want to give you a quick look at a list of potential options of what like an icon can hook up to. Okay, so you can see it's quite a comprehensive list. Okay. Now, what I'll do is I'll just jump into the measure application here, guys, and just give you some basic navigation tips and tricks on where you can find some of your main functions. So I have just got one reference file brought in here, just a CAD file. So generally within any of your applications, you will have a toolbox option, which refers to the tool specific to that application. Okay. So you can see here within the measure app, we could define a control point if we wanted to survey in the control point. Uh, we could set an automatic logging. We can add a shift onto a surveyed point. Okay, we can measure an arc or we can complete sets of angles. Okay, down in the bottom right hand corner, you can see your measure bar configuration. But you can see I'm currently not actually connected up to a unit, so I actually haven't got a measure option here. 
So if I quickly just connect up to a GPS and go back into measure, you can see there we have our measure option. But you can also see now within our properties window, we have active easting, northing, and height values for where our current position is. And if I move around the screen, you can see these values update. Okay. Currently, we are in pan view, which is the four arrows here, which means we can pan left, right, up, down. If I select onto the option below, I can rotate around my screen and view in 3D. So this is a 2D CAD drawing with some 3D points and lines above them. If I select back to pan and select the north arrow, it goes back to a top view. And you can see now I'm back in pan mode. So you can see in our measure bar configuration, I can select a measure point. I could define a point ID if I want to change the naming of the point that I want to actually survey. And I can create a line. You are not limited to these three options. We can press and hold, and you can see we can actually configure whichever is highlighted in blue, which will be displayed in this specific column. So we can actually alter this and we can add attributes, codes, etc. Okay. You can see upon our properties bar, we can see the point ID and easing and northing and height, but also what active layer or code is set for this specific point. So I can actually configure this tab as well. So if I just press and hold down on my screen, you can see there now, page one is highlighted blue. And as we are aware, anything that's highlighted blue is currently active. But you can see there, page one is active. It's set to ID. So I can actually change this specific column, or I can select into a different one and change it to any of the icons down here below. I could also generate a second page, and I could actually create this as my coordinate qualities, my CQs. If I go green tick and flick to the next page, you can now see we have two dots, which means there's two pages, and we can flick between them. But if I just return back into this page, you can see we also have an eye up here. So if we select up in there, it will actually display different bits of information, which actually will give you information relating to the different uh, icons that you can see within the properties tab. So one star is accuracy and height, two is in position, and 3D is actually the combined accuracy of the two. Okay, so that is our properties bar. You will also have, whether you're connected up to a robotic or a GPS, up in the top bars, you will also have multiple options. So I can view my current position, even though we can see it in the properties bar. But you can also change your measurement mode. So I get set to average. OK, so I get average by time. And you can see there we can enter. So when I set to average by time, I might want to change this from five seconds to 180 seconds, a three minute average position. So you can see now, if I go into measure mode, my average time is 180, but I need to actually change it across to average time. And now you can see it's gone from measure to average. Okay, so I can just refer that back to instant. We can also define our antenna height. Okay, the options bars up here will be specific to whether you're connected to an antenna or to a robotic total station. So I can just go use this, guys, if I just disconnect away from here and connect up to my robotic. If I return to the measure application, you can see now we actually have an added drop down menu. Okay. So up here now you have some completely different options in terms of like a laser pointer, your level compensator for your total station. This guys obviously we won't have to level and compensate our GNSS. And you can have see we have some research settings up here specific to robotic as opposed to a GPS. Okay, so just some map navigation tips. If we press and hold the zoom out button down at the bottom here, it will do a zoom extents. If we press and hold zoom in, what it'll now enable us to do is zoom in in any area that we actually select. So if I want to come in to the bottom left hand corner of this map, I can just keep tapping down to these points, and you can see, whereas in alternatively, if I press and hold zoom out and if I press zoom in, it just goes to the center of the screen. So instead of us pressing zoom in and recentering the map to the area we want and then recentering again, we can just press and hold, which will make this a lot simpler for us. OK, down also along the bottom, we can see we have our layer manager. So when you're on the higher versions, you can see it comes up like a split screen. If you're on some of the lower versions of icon, it will actually this will come across and take over the whole screen. But you will see some of the active 
CAD files, reference data, control points, anything that's active within the project that will enable you to be switched on within your current map screen, you'll see here as an option. What you can also see is when you bring in a CAD file, we can see that there is a lot of lines, but we also have some points. Generally, designers don't actually, when they're drawing, say, a, a slab, they will draw the line one, but they won't actually create a point at the junction. ICOM will create points at the start and end of all vertices, center points of circles for us. All we will have to do is come into our layer manager and select show points. Because if, we're, if we are trying to lay out to an intersection of two lines, it is a lot more precise and better practice to stake out to a point on junction as opposed to trying to stake out to the end of a line. Okay, so I can just switch them back off. Some of you may ask, okay, so if we want to look at our points, so our survey points, any imported control points and so on, you can see what looks like an Excel spreadsheet down here or a tabular grid. If we click in here, this is our point list, but it doesn't go straight into the point list. It brings us first to this section here where it says, which information do you want to show the points for? So I, if I just want to show the points for my job and come in, I have not got any points because I have none of my own surveyed information. But if I go back and switch this on, you can see there we have some of those points that we could see visible associated to our CAD file. So automatically we can focus our search as opposed to looking down through long lists. We can clearly identify what type of information we are looking for quicker. So if I just come into just my job, you can see there you always have a toolbox. It's whatever options menu you have within that existing screen that's present. So if I go into my toolbox for the point list, the tools I have are new point. I could type in a new point and I can tick the box to create the control point and I can even define a code and layer. Or if I had an existing point, I could select a point and I could edit or delete if it was one of my points. You cannot edit or delete points that are associated to a reference file because they are locked. Okay. However, also within here is we can create a stakeout list and even export out a stakeout list or search for a specific point. Okay, so that's our point list. So what we also have then is we have our little eye symbol down here, which is our view configuration tab. And you'll see there one of the main options that I like to keep active is automatic centering. OK, which will constantly keep our screen centered onto our location. So if I'm locked onto my survey prism and I'm recording measurements, it will center my screen relative to that. Or if I'm using a GPS, it will center onto my location. However, if you are trying to pan across your screen just to inspect your drawing or look for a specific point, you can disable that, which will enable you to pan across your screen and view as you would so wish. OK. We can also see we have additional functions like elevation filter and to isolate. We will be showing those functions a lot clearer within the layout objects tutorial. We can change the orientation of our screen. I like to keep it set to northeast, southwest. Okay. But you can set it to a line, which means we could have that the whole drawing is orientated, looking nice and perpendicular on our screen or relative to our movement. I will recommend you stay in Northeast Southwest unless you are happy to do so otherwise and are comfortable with that. Okay. So guys, that's our general navigation. Okay, and a quick introduction into the like icon field software. If you have any further questions, please feel free to get in touch.